But I do have some boys and girls who are here to help me play a little sticky ball. Ready? Watch this. Good morning, church. Um, today we are worshiping in Roby Hall. This was the original sanctuary where this church used to worship, um, and we thought that it was appropriate during this season for us to come and worship here this morning. Um, we ask that you would join us as we sing these songs together. the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, you're worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you.
First Church, thank you so much for your ongoing generosity. We have received cards from Leesburg, Ocala, Virginia. Thank you for taking the time to send an encouragement alongside your, your generous contribution, tithes and offerings. We continue to be the church. We continue to do everything we can to offer ministry applicable to this season. So tomorrow is the big launch for Vacation Bible School Home Edition 2020. Registration begins tomorrow. We are expecting 350 kids to sign up. So go onto our website and make sure that your child has their VBS annual experience. We also want to recognize the work that continues to take place um, every day on campus. And you can see here how Charles, this is our personnel with facilities and maintenance and all the work that we are doing preparing for when all of us come together, but also as as a way to maintain and continue the work of our church facilities. Church, thank you very much for your generosity. As yesterday, we had a great time with an, another hot meal distribution. Thank you especially to the GO team as they worked very hard to put this effort together. All the volunteers, and like I said, your generosity makes this effort possible. So remember, we still have available for you text to give, give online, or continue to send your checks to the office. We're there every day to receive your mail, or if you need to call the office, we're still available for you. Thank you for your generosity. Let us continue to worship the Lord. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss, the Father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one. Bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon the cross, my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed, I hear my mocking voice call out among the skulls. Good morning, church, and here we are again. If there is something for sure that this quarantine is, is teaching us is that we need a lot of prayer. And as I woke up this morning, I, I was um, taking 
to this specific passage on 1 Timothy chapter 2, and it reads in this way, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people, ask God to help them, intercede on their behalf, and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority, so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. This is good and pleasing God our Savior. So I would, like, I would like to invite you this morning so that we can pray at that level for all the people who is in authority, for all the people who are actually doing sacrifices to care for other people this morning, and for all people, friends, family, anybody that comes to your mind or that you carry in your heart, let us pray together this morning. Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we give you thanks for the ability and the opportunity, Lord, to call you Abba Father in this moment or of need, Lord. We pray that you hear our prayers, that you be with us today, Lord. We especially ask this morning that you be with our president, that you be with every single person that gives advice to the president, Lord, that they will do it in a godly way with wisdom and knowledge, Lord, for the good of all people. Lord, I pray for all the governors in all the states around the, the, this uh, wonderful country, Lord. I pray for anybody who is in authority that you also be with them. Given of your spirit, Lord, transform their mind and give them wisdom in order to do uh, sound decisions, Lord. We pray for doctors, nurses, first responders, teachers, anybody, Lord, who is uh, doing something on behalf of somebody else. And we pray for parents and families at home for children's lord that you keep everybody safe today lord we, pr we pray for uh, our own pastor pastor vidalis as she gets ready to deliver the message and pastors for all around the world lord who are getting ready to do the same that you prepare our hearts and our minds to receive the word that you have prepared for us today lord and we do all this acknowledging always the way that you taught us to pray our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Earlier this week, I was talking with Lisa Gonzalez, our children's director, and Ben Hare, our communications specialist, who's filming right now. And we were talking about and coming to the realization that in about three weeks, our children are going to be completing the school year, the virtual um, session, and we will all need as parents to create a new schedule to keep our kids occupied, um, to keep them entertained in a very full-time level, considering that most camps, um, most sports camps, and all the things that we're used to in summer won't take place or they're gonna be done in a home edition. So we laughed and there's a little bit of nerves with that and anticipation of difficult moments at home and we had good thoughts, bad thoughts, ugly thoughts. So I thought of parents and what we're going to be embarking this summer and we can all imagine that we will have really tough moments and we can laugh about it, but they can even be considered unholy moments or at least in our heads. So I thought of this quote, uh, Saint, Saint Francis of Assisi who said, I have been all things unholy. If God can work through me, God can work through anyone. So notice how he recognizes his unholiness. As you read these words on the screen, I hope you can notice that he's implying that he sees his imperfections, he knows he has flaws and faults and failures, and the need for God to sanctify him and help him. This is a man um, that was canonized in the Catholic Church, known for the way he advocated for animals, for nature. He worked for the poor. He did incredible things for the spreading of the gospel. And what he is saying is, thanks to God's work, 
I am here. Not perfect, but being sanctified by God. I see a deep sense of gratitude in this quote. So today, I want to bring to your attention a particular story in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. I believe this story heightens the need for us to be grateful people. It brings to the surface the question that we are to ask ourselves, how do we respond? Well, first, how do we see gratitude and the need to be grateful and what we do with it? So let's get right to it. Let's read Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, there is a social distancing there. Keeping their distance, they called out saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When Jesus saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not 10 made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then Jesus said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Back then when a person was infected with a, a leprous kind of disease, they were expected to self-quarantine they were labeled, they were segregated, and they were labeled as unclean. And during the time of being in quarantine, should anyone for whatever reason approach them or be near them, they had to self-identify themselves by saying loudly and publicly, unclean, unclean. If a leper were lucky enough to recover from this disease, this person had to be verified by a priest that they were okay and that then they were allowed to return to their life in community. When Jesus walked by, 10 lepers, keeping their distance, cried out. They joined forces so that their voice was loud and more courageous, hoping, putting some level of faith hoping that Jesus would see them and would meet their need. Jesus saw the need and Jesus met their need. But then only one came back to praise God and give Jesus the gratitude. Jesus is not demanding our praise. This is not the lesson. But there's something about experiencing how Jesus helps us to the point that the person has to come back is so compelled by the gift received of healing that he or she will make their first priority to respond in a way that brings Jesus to the priority and focus and giving Jesus the gratitude. Seeing God's mercy makes a difference in your life and it ought to compel us to respond. So the point of the story is for us to ask ourselves, what do we do when we see God's mercy at work? How do we respond to God's mercy, faithfulness, and love? I have been all things unholy. I just said that quote, yet by the grace of God, we're still standing. We're called child, uh, God's child. We can be called the people of God. We can be empowered to do and make a difference in the world. And we are to attribute all of that 
to God. For every success we've earned, for every victory we can celebrate, remember we're not self-made. It did take your effort, your sweat, your energy, your diligence, yes. It did take um, the ability that we have with our hands and our feet, but the question remains and will always remain, who gave you the capability, who gave you the hands, who gave you the voice, who gives you the drive? Who grants us every day a new day to try things again? Who gives us the possibility of a future? Only one, and that is Jesus Christ. We can never repay God's grace, but we can and we should return to God to give him the praise and thanksgiving. So then Jesus asked, were not 10 men clean? Where are they? What does the failure to return to Jesus say of their character. Too often, once a person gets what they needed or they wanted, they forget to return to God. Or there may be a tendency to say, I'll come back to God later. The absence of gratitude reveals self-centeredness. It's an attitude that I really actually deserve more than I'm getting, or in reality, I got myself here. Gratitude, the truth is, gratitude is an expression of faith. Gratitude is a response that we are willing to offer because of what we have received God's grace. Life is a gift. Health is a gift. And living in quarantine is a valid reason to be frustrated. Many people are struggling right now and facing hardship. We all are crying to Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Heal us. Clean us. So one more day that I'm not infected one more day that you and I are healthy, we are to return passionately to God and say, thank you. One more day that I realize my kids are at home every hour of the day and I get to have them at home is to be deeply grateful. My kids are driving me crazy. Yep, that may be true. It is true. But keeping in perspective what is happening to so many other families, and that is hard already to understand why not me, why them or him or her, the least we can do is return to God and give thanks. There was a time there have been times when many parents and families have yearned for the time to have dinner together. There's that constant battle of we don't have enough time. Well, now we have breakfast, brunch, lunch, snack, dinner, late snack, and we are having a whole lot of meals with our families. Amen. May we really give thanks to God for what we do have. When you feel at the bottom of the food chain or dead last, how do you move toward gratitude? The one who came back could have prayed privately, could have continued on his way to the priest, and maybe we could simply make the assumption that he gave thanks on his way. In other words, he could have multitasked a simple statement of gratitude. But there's something to be said of, he said, I'm gonna get back to my family who I miss later. I'm going to get to finally to the priest to be confirmed later because I must first go to Jesus and say thank you.
The next and final piece important to highlight from this story has to do with the fact that the writer adds a specific description of the one who came back. And it reads, the one who came back was a Samaritan. Back then, when a person became ill with leprosy, they were labeled unclean for the duration of that time. People from Samaria, from a particular culture, those who were Samaritans, were considered unclean and of a lesser value because being Samaritan, meaning from the moment they were born, in the eyes of many people, Samaritans were considered unclean. In chapter 10, there's that story of the Samaritan who noticed someone hurt, left to die, and saw the need and reached out and met the need of that person. And we know that story as the Good Samaritan. In the eyes of many, the Samaritan was an unworthy person, lesser value, um, unworthy of being cleansed, of being valued and in an equal way, um, thought as un incapable of, be of doing good things, of being empowered. And that's the person that is recorded in the Bible as the one who did something really good to the point that Jesus said, your faith has made you well. If you believe as I believe that the word of God brings the truth and reveals God's nature, this is very telling of how God values and loves everyone and humanity. There is no such thing as a group or a person's of lesser value. There is no such Christian thing for us to determine the value on someone else. We are to see the possibility of mercy for all. Have you noticed how normal it seems in our society to discredit someone, to rationalize their hardship as a well-deserved outcome? Doesn't it feel like it's easy to criticize and analyze first in order to refrain from responding with compassion? What if we flip that around? What would it look like for us to respond first with compassion and analyze later? This story is telling us, put your heart in the right place. How might thankfulness be an antidote to a critical spirit? We may pass by persons who live day to day struggles, particularly spiritual struggles. Do we really think that people who stop and help do so because they have nothing better to do? They're sacrificing. They feel compelled to respond. Is it possible that sometimes we lack the infusion of loving God and loving our neighbor because we are not compelled? We're not in the right place in our hearts. But this story reminds us as the entire biblical narrative, we are called, we are created, we are called, and we're commissioned to be Christ-like and to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. So we must teach our children to be grateful, to go the extra mile. We, we ought to encourage our significant others. We are to exemplify as Christ followers what it's like to be truly grateful people. Remember in the end, Jesus said, your faith has made you well. So may you ask yourself this morning, is your sense of gratitude an expression of your faith? And if so, how are you responding with that gratitude to God? God bless you.
The song we're about to sing is a song that I wrote, um, and it's the first song that I played at this church um, after the Stoneman Douglas tragedy. Uh, so I felt that it would um, be appropriate for us to sing it now. Um, it's a song of, of comfort, of, of hope, and um, each part of the song um, reveals a new truth about who God is. Hallelujah. 